our elementary school counselors, Ms. Roxana Palacios and Ms. Jenny Cel Batista. Um, we are going to be recording this session also, just like last time, so that we can send it to other parents uh, who were not able to be here today. We decided to try having them in the afternoons uh, so more parents could join us. So welcome, as Jenny said. Thank you, Ms. Manzanares. Well, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Today we're gonna be talking about staying calm and managing stress. Um, at the end of the session, we're gonna open a space for questions and answers. So keep in mind your comments and questions so we can discuss, okay? So um, if you're feeling stressed about the this whole situation we're going through, uh, your brain is not misfiring. Stress is normal. Uh, and it's a healthy and biological response to perceived threats and challenges, okay? So it, it is a response that, that gets us ready to act, uh, to protect ourselves and our loved ones. But too much stress can hijack our ability to respond or to reason through a situation. Uh, instead of helping us, it can put us in, in, into a state of fight or flight or freeze mode that, um, that is not helpful, right? It's not a helpful reaction. So um, as much as possible, we want to be responsive instead of, of reactive stress sometimes impede us for doing that. Okay, so who are you today? Parenting during a pandemic comes with many job titles, right? So during this quarantine, you're, you might be wearing many hats, most of them totally unexpected, such as tax support or t-shirts, okay? Think about which role might be more challenging for you right now which one might be causing more stress, okay? So the first step is always validating our emotions. It's okay to feel like that. It's okay to feel overwhelmed. It's okay to feel anxious or scared, frustrated. Validation means that we respect. We respect what we are feeling, okay? I show respect to myself when I accept what I feel. Uh, we need to understand that there's no right way to feel something, okay? We, we all of us might, might feel differently if we have to cope with the same situation, okay? Uh, so we need to validate what we're feeling because it's our feeling. And comparing to others sometimes is not helpful at all. So after we validate our emotions, we, we recognize it. We try to recognize it. What is it? What, where am I in my body? Where am I feeling it? Okay? And this helps us bring our emotion to consciousness. Okay? So after we respect our, our emotions, we recognize them, then we can be able to regulate uh, our emotions. So regulation doesn't mean that we have to eliminate or avoid what we are feeling. In order to regulate our emotions, we, we first need to acknowledge, we, we, we first need to acknowledge them, okay? Uh, we have to embrace our emotion. Allowing time to worry, uh, it, it's okay. And during that time, we ask ourselves, what, what is that that I need right now, okay? It's like reassuring yourself. It's, it's like, uh, like the slide says here, I'm doing the best that I can right now. But that, that doing, that, that phrase, it's like the reassurance that we need. And um, some mindfulness expert says that if we press 
ourselves with our, with our, with our, with our fingers every time we say a word like, I am doing the best that I can right now. That bring us to the present, that bring us, that bring our, our, uh, our emotion to consciousness, okay? Um, so, these are times of uncertainty, okay? Trying to control everything, everything just add up more stress to our lives. So, relax, it, to, to, uh, taking time to relax is important, okay? Because we need to understand that right now, nothing is under control. Routines and structures, as we discussed last week, help us to achieve some sense of control. But if something this pandemia is teaching us right now is that no day is exactly as any other, okay? Uh, remember, you are doing the best you can. And if it is not working, allow yourself to drop everything for a moment and rest. Remember to treat you kindly, okay? And, and, and that acronym there, that says dear, it's like, remind us of drop everything and rest. Okay, if you need to do that, do it without, without feeling guilty. Don't be judgmental to yourself, okay? You might find comfort in the idea that we are not going through this alone, okay? There, there, there's a lot of people that's going through this same experience, uh, right? Well, here in Panama, we are all together in this with a Jenny, Jenny said, one, one minute. We cannot see the presentation. No? No. Oh, sorry. I was going through the slides with the, it says that I'm sharing it, no? Oh, I was I was in slide four. <laughs> okay, let me share my screen again. Okay. Now. Yes. Now. Now it is. No. Is yes, there? You can see it. Yes. 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 Okay. <laughs> Any of these slides were presented before? Yeah. Yeah. We were talking about the many hats we are wearing today and taking time to drop everything and rest if that's what we need to do. Okay? So we were here. Can you see the You're Not Alone slide, Roxana? Can it be seen? Yes. Okay. So I was saying that we might be, we might find comfort in the idea that we are not alone going through this. Uh, but remember, there is no right way to feel about it. Okay, so talking and listening to others can be very soothing. Okay, without the intent of comparing what we are feeling to others. Is remember that our emotions are valid for us. It's what we are experiencing through this situation. Okay, other people might be feeling something similar or different, and that's okay because there's no right way to feel about it. Okay, so listening and talking to others about what we are feeling can be really soothing in this moment. Um, another thing, it's take a break. I, I, I can imagine that many of you might be thinking like, well, well this is really difficult between, you know, the all the, the demands throughout the day from your own uh, workload, the children, schoolwork, then family time, the responsibilities at home, preparing meals and everything. Uh, this might be kind of like impossible to achieve, but we all need a break sometimes, okay? And let's try to, to, to brainstorm a list of things that we would like to do and keep it keep it there keep it in mind so whenever you can find that time to take a break 
you don't lose time thinking, oh, well, how am I going to use this, this, this moment I'm giving to myself, okay? Um, take advantage of the time when children are sleeping or engaged playing or doing something else. Uh, to have fun and relax yourself. This is really important. We need we, we need individual times. Last week when we were talking about routines, we were saying that it's important to set up times for personal spaces, okay? So don't feel guilty about taking a break. Um, another recommendation is to listen, to listen to our children, okay? Uh, we all need to be listened. Uh, talking can be very soothing and listening can be very caring. Listen with your heart, okay? Listen in the way you would like to be listened. Uh, avoid being judgmental and you might rather say, tell me more about it or so what you are trying to say is and then you try to rephrase what your child is telling you and also asking what can i do for you what what do what do you need right now how can i help you uh because the response cannot can just be like you know i nothing i just wanted i just wanted to tell you i just wanted to talk to you and uh, this is uh, a moment where many where many parents are saying that uh, children are becoming extra demanding of attention of course, this whole circumstance of being all together at home, even though we are together, everybody might be engaged in their own uh, activities. And especially young children find the way to call for attention and in ways that might be even new for, for you as parents. Okay, so pay attention to these behaviors that always tell us uh, something about the children the child's needs okay um many people might be feeling that during this quarantine uh certain standards need to be accomplished or fulfilled okay there's no such thing uh that this like uh this this whole situation is completely new for all of us okay there's no precedence or what or or how should we act or what should we do during the quarantine the only right thing to do is to stay home and 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 stay safe that's the only thing that we need to to understand that it's like uh expected for everyone beside that whatever you do within the four walls of your home it's it's what you it's what you and your family needs it's what it um, is what is valid for you as a family, okay? So uh, remember that you are enough and those expectations for being perfect during this quarantine, the only thing that it, that do is to add up more stress for life, okay? Um, so a Try to go easy on the rules. There's there's no one judging you, but your maybe yourself. Okay, as as we mentioned last week, uh, routines are important, and uh, w within your the structure you've created, there there's gonna be negotiables and non-negotiables, and pick yours, pick what is valid for you and your family. Go easy on yourself, and. Uh, if you have to be flexible, do it. Nothing, nothing's gonna happen. Nothing wrong's gonna happen. Okay. Try to keep things under control, but if you need to be flexible, that's okay. Um, you're also allowed to feel a little stir crazy right now. Uh, who are you competing with right now? Who's judging you? There is no good or bad quarantine. This is all about, you know, trying to bond and share and explore and learn together. Uh, if you want to take advantage of this time to set up some personal and family goals, that's okay. But go one day at a time and don't forget to be flexible. That's the a, that's a most important thing. Okay? 
So many of you might be here today because you want to know how do we achieve that? How do we de-stress together? Okay. Uh, remember, as, as we said at the beginning of the presenta presentation, stress is a normal response, okay, to this whole situation. But when stress starts to accumulate uh, and it, it, it comes to a level that it's creating conflict because um, it might put us like in a fight state all the time to, and increase our reaction to think that maybe in another moment we will, we will you know, uh, go over that and not even pay attention. Uh, right now, the whole confinement situation can create this sense of reactivity and people can be very, you know, uh, reactive. So uh, how do we deal with this? Research shows that just being in the presence of a compassionate, safe adult can help kids calm down. Okay, so as families, we can be that person for, for each other. We can take turns in doing so. Do, doesn't have to be the same person all the time. Uh, so thankfully, we have uh, good tools for calming stress, okay? Uh, these tools can be used together or can be used individually, can be used together, and not only help us to face with this quarantine situation, but it's also, it, this, these tools come from, uh, from from uh, the mindfulness approach, from the cognitive approach uh, that help us understand that we can learn to manage our emotions and, and, and to regulate our physical responses through uh, breathing and uh, some other strategies, okay? Uh, so, breathe. Okay, when we are anxious or upset, our heart rate increases and our breath becomes more shallow. When we take deep breaths, we send a message back to the brain, it's okay to calm down. Breathing calms down our nervous central system, okay, uh, and help us respond in a, in a clearer mode. Uh, it's not, as we tell children all the time, it's not just any kind of breathing. It's a particular way to breathe, okay? Here in the presentation, we have a link that uh, shows step-by-step step how can you do that and also have some videos. But uh, in a couple of minutes, Ms. Roxana is going to guide us through, an, through a breathing exercise, okay? So today we're going to be practicing uh, how can we breathe to calm down our central nervous system. Another strategy is uh, the fire hose, the turn down the fire hose. Uh, all these needs affect children and ourselves uh, because they have an impact on the hormones we need to manage stress, hunger, overstimulation, uh, lack of sleep, uh, lack of exercise. All these circumstances, all these uh, needs affect our uh, physical response, okay? So in the moment, stress can feel like, like taking a fire hose to the face and it's hard to, to think clearly. This acronym might help us think about what is it that might be causing that response. Am I hungry? Am I overstimulated? Do I need to sleep? Do I need to exercise? And these things are also uh, some, some things that we can notice in, in our children, like might be hunger, might be overstimulation, maybe, maybe he or she didn't have a good night's sleep last night, uh, maybe need to exercise. So uh, these questions help us understand what are those areas that we might need to pay attention if the behavior, the children's behavior is showing us, you know, uh, stress, okay? Um, and uh, if we see the bright side of all this whole situation, this is a tremendous opportunity 
to develop skills that maybe in, in, in some other moment or time might be difficult to encourage, okay? So let's seize the opportunity to help our, our children become more independent, more resourceful, more caring, and among the many other things that you might need, that you might find right now a good opportunity to develop, okay? Uh, and remember, under stress, we all regress, okay? This is a quote from Jenny Tigrotten Hughes. She is a therapist from the Gottman Institute, and she, she says that we are in a pandemic. Everything is uncertain. We all be triggered in some ways, shutting down, fleeing, getting angry and reactive. But hopefully, we, all, we will also lean into the opportunities for growth individually and together, okay? So with keeping this in mind, I'm gonna give Ms. Roxana the opportunity to guide us through, a, through an exercise. Ms. Roxana. Hello everyone, nice to see you again this week. Okay, so, well, before um, I would like to add to Ms. Batista that Re that every emotion that we have is related to a rhythm of breath. So you can tell that when you're happy, your breath is normal, relaxed, but when you're angry, your breath might become faster. If you're sad, then your breath is lower. So in the same way, when we, when we change our breathing rhythms, we can change our emotions. So it's not like you're just gonna read and tell your child, oh, just go and breathe, or you can, or you do it yourself. It's, there's a specific way in which you can breathe and that's gonna help you calm down. So let's do a little exercise. This is only like a glimpse of a guided meditation. It's not, or a relaxation. It's not like a full one, but let's try. Can you hear the music? You got this stuff? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So first, let's sit comfortably and easily. Our, our back needs to be straight. We can sit crisscross or we can put our legs in front of us. We're going to start relaxing our body first. Then we're going to do a breathing exercise and then a relaxation. So first, we are going to take the tips of our fingers and give a little massage to our face, like little taps on our face, on our forehead. We can move up to our head. Then we go down to our cheeks and to our shin. As you listen to my voice, you can close your eyes and breathe slowly and deeply. Taking deep breaths in and breathing out. You can relax your hands. Take a deep breath in and move our head to the back. And as we breathe out, we put our chin on our chest and start doing round movements with our neck, starting with the right side slowly, and then going down on the left side. As we move to the right side, we breathe in, and to the left side, we breathe out all the air. One more time, breathe in, and then breathe out, and as you go to the center, you change direction. Breathing in to the left, and breathe out to the right. As you get to the center, you can relax, and now we're putting our hands on our shoulders, and we're going to the round circles with our shoulders, to the front and to the back. When 
we go in one direction, we breathe in and then we breathe out. We change direction. Relax. Now, you are going to take deep breaths and feel how your belly is full of air. And the air move up through your lungs until your throat. You hold on your breath for two seconds and then start breathing out slowly. Close your eyes if you feel comfortable. Breathe in again and feel your stomach, then your lungs, and then your throat with air. Your shoulders are a little up. Then you hold your breath for two seconds, and you start breathing out. Ask yourself, what am I thinking now? Become aware of your thoughts. Notice if your thoughts are negative or positive. Embrace your thoughts. Now become aware of how you feel emotionally. Are you feeling happy or not? Embrace your emotions. Become aware of your body. Notice anything that hurts or is tense. Release the tension. Listen to your breath as it goes in and out. You can put your hand on your stomach and feel it rise and fall with each breath. want to say to yourself it's okay whatever it is I'm okay focus your attention on your breath for a while And notice how your whole body feels. Become aware of your body and your surroundings. Listen to the sounds in the room.
And when you are ready, you may gradually and easily open your eyes. How do you feel? <laughs> okay, this was just like a very, very short glimpse of a relaxation, but there are many resources for <laughs> almost fell asleep. There are many resources online for guided meditations and actually um, many, many research-based centers for psychology and psychiatry are strongly recommending to practice mindfulness during this time, like breathing exercises, breathing techniques, and meditation. So we can share with you some apps later when we finish the presentation so that you can download them or you can look for some online. Okay, do you have any questions? Let me read the chat. If you have any questions, you can add them to the chat and they'll do their best to answer them. Okay, so there are some, for example, I'm going to write here. One app is Calm. I just wrote it there, Calm. You can download it on your cell phone and they have guided meditations. There's also, the one that I use is called Sadva, like this. Um, we can research some more applications so that you can have access to them. Uh, what I like about Calm is that they have a section for children and they have stories uh, and they have meditation for children, guided meditation. Uh, it's important. Also, in Go, mm -hmm. Go Noodle, um, it's a website that, like a resource for children that they have different exercises and it also includes some breathing exercises for children like rainbow breathing, balloon breathing. Um, and it's also important like if you feel this is something that could be helpful for you that you could also practice it. It only takes a few minutes. Um, so, and, and you feel very rested. And actually, when you meditate, it's not like you are sleeping. It's like a middle state of mind between being awake and being sleeping. Because when you are awake, you are alert, you listen to everything, but you're not resting. When you are sleeping, you are resting, but you're not very alert. You're like drowsy. But when you meditate, you are resting, but you are alert and you can listen to the to anyone who's guiding the meditation. And it is and it is equal like 20 minutes of meditation is equal to four hours of sleep. So imagine we here we only did like three minutes. Go noodle, okay. We have some questions here. It says, um, it's difficult for children to follow this, is this instruction when they are stressed. Is there something specific for children? I have seen some in YouTube, but they are too distracted. Also, and it's difficult for them to focus on the meditation while watching. Mm -hmm. Let me, there is also another, uh, let, let me let me talk a little bit about, about this, um, Question here, um, what I do when in my office, when, when children come to my office, sometimes they come uh, when they are having a difficult moment. So, so we give them a timeout or like a break from the, the class setting so they can come to a safe place to talk and share what they're feeling. Uh, 
the first thing I do is I validate their emotions. I, I, I let them feel them. Okay. It's, it's sometimes we, we get so anxious to, to make them get out of that state. Okay. Like, okay, but yeah, what, let's do this. Let's do that. Let, I'm going to play this music. I'm going to play this meditation. And it's, it's not what, what, uh, what they need at the beginning. Okay. That the, what they need at the beginning is someone to be there with them, just accompanying them, validating them and saying like, I, I can see, uh, that you are having a hard time right now. I am here with you. Um, let's let's do something for you to calm down would you like to would you like to feel better uh and asking them right like what do you what is it that what 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 do you need so um i'm here for you let me know when you're ready so we can do this together okay and usually it takes one or two minutes for them to calm down if they are crying or if they are upset or if they are like oh, uh, pushing you know their, their face or whatever physical response they're sending it takes usually one or two minutes to calm down and when they are ready then you can tell them that you're gonna uh play something for to help them calm down okay uh, what i usually do is that i I have some, you know, like scripts which I go through because I'm not a um, meditation expert or anything, but it, it's, I, I can say that it's really helpful, okay? It's, it, every time I use it in the office, children calm down and they feel much better. And, and, at, and at the end of the, of the, the guided meditation, they can talk more about what they were feeling okay so uh what i do is i i ask, ask them to put like in a comfortable position to close their eyes i don't show them the screen i just let, let them listen i play music i can read it sometimes i read it for for them and sometimes i play them the ones that are in youtube i play them for them but i don't i don't let them see them because that that's distract that distract them. So I, I ask them to close their eyes to get it, a blanket also is very sometimes helpful because that gives them a sense of comfort and you know they can cuddle in the on the blanket. Uh, and, and also that's because of a physiological response of managing the body temperature and all these things we were talking before about helping the body to regulate the hormones that are triggered by a, a stressful state, okay? So what can you do is to play the app or play the meditation or play the guided uh, exercise and let them listen, okay? Without uh, seeing the screen. But the first thing to do is to, to, uh, to give them time to, to calm down a little bit, okay? Another thing is that you practice all these strategies when they are calm so that they know how to use them when they need it. So you, this is, it is like a practice, something that you do like for a couple minutes every day. And then when they, when they need it, they will be more aware of their own feelings and will be able to use it appropriately so it's a it's a slow process of being more in touch with our own emotions so that's what Miss Batista just said is very helpful like validating their emotions you are feeling sad you are feeling stressed and and it is normal um, that you feel that way so experience that emotion and then let's use a strategy or a, let's try a way that helps you go back to your to feeling happy or calm Mm -hmm. I think there's more, more questions. There's another question. Is there any other tool? Oh, we can use when children start to throw a tantrum or are in the middle of a demanding time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we're we're gonna be we're gonna have a um, 
another session uh, about managing misbehavior or, and, and also we think we're gonna address this uh, tantrums and how to manage these situations. But right now uh, we can, uh, adelantarles un poquito that we can, uh, when, remember that behavior is sending a message. It's something they cannot express verbally at that moment. That's why they are using their body or the, that response to send a message of need. They need something, okay? So in, at that moment, uh, if we, and this is kind of tricky because of course, it, a child's tantrum, of course, triggers immediately a state of stress, like, okay, I don't know, how am I gonna deal with it? And sometimes we are not very patient because we are tired, we are exhausted, we, depending on, on what moment, usually it's never never a good, a good moment. Uh, so it's, we need to try to model for them how to manage our emotions in a healthy way okay so imagine the child throwing a tantrum and the adult screaming and yelling oh well but stop and can be more confusing can add more stress not only on the child but also in ourselves and it's it gonna turn out into an escalation that wouldn't take you any to any good place okay so uh the first thing is to try to translate that state like I can see you are upset. I, I can see you are frustrated or I can see you are sad or whatever you can interpret from, from what it's going on. I'm here to help you, but I need you to calm down. Okay, I'm gonna be here until you calm down. That's it. You don't so a tool, um, a tool that we're using and that it has been very helpful is to have like a take a break spot in your house we did that in some in the classroom in some classes we were supposed to implement in every classroom like in on this trimester but you can have like a place in your house to take a break and again you need to like explain how this take a break spot works before when the child when your child is uh, happy or calm and then in this in this spot it could be anywhere in your house you can have available some materials that could help your child calm down you and you need to have this conversation with your child as well for example um okay it helps you to draw then you have some uh, markers or crayons and paper um you can also you could also have some switches or like anything that could help no. your child slow down and then when he or she are is fine then you go to the place and you model like okay you have this conversation that we all need to take a break sometimes that being upset is absolutely normal this there is a wide range of emotions and we don't want to send the message that they can't express their anger but we all need to learn um, like more healthy ways to manage this anger so at the beginning, make it like a graphic for them is helpful. And they can go to this corner with you from the start and then gradually more independently. And then at the end, the goal would be that they don't need it. They can go to this place and try some of the strategies that they have chosen um, to be helpful for them. And you can, after the child calms down, you can have a conversation and say, well, um, let's try to figure out what happened, uh, what made you feel that way, and then try to find out the like the root of the child's feeling and, and validate that he or she could feel that way. So gradually start teaching them that we all have different ways to calm down and that it's okay to feel upset, but that but we need to embrace that feeling and then let it go so that it doesn't impact our relationships, our work in school, our learning, etc. So when they, when me um, administration shares with you the, the video, I can share some resources for the take a break spot in case you wanna start implementing it at home, then you can have that available. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so there's another question. My child is starting to worry about the long-term future. The uncertainty is causing quite a lot of stress. The idea of not starting next year in class or spending a birthday without friends is all starting to get her, and she's feeling quite sad. Can not, what can I do or say to help her stay calm? Well, that is a, an, a really good question uh, because I think we all feel like that sometimes, right? Uh, these are times of, of uncertainty uh, and, and trying to control everything just add up more stress and to our lives. So the first thing we need to understand is that there are things we cannot control. And this whole pandemia thing is, it's something that is out of control. We are trying to do our best. Authorities are trying to do their best to, to, to keep us safe. We have to do our part too. And that is something we can talk about to our children to let them know that even though there are things we cannot control, there are things that we can do and we can control. And grab that uh, feeling of control that which sometimes comes down and and, and the lack of control is what, as I said before, triggers uh, this whole feeling, uh, 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 feeling uncomfortable about the, these circumstances. Uh, but it's, it's more like trying to, to help children to stay aware of the present we are living right now. This is what we can control right now. Worrying mm -hmm. about the future, and we all worry about the future. That's, that's part of, and that's what is, what is creating so much anxiety in, in all of us. We are worried about what's going to happen next, what's going to happen tomorrow. Now, later in the, in the, in the conference, in the press conference, what, what the numbers, how they're going to look like. We are all thinking about what's, what's next, what's next. Uh, but that doesn't help us at all. It, that's something we cannot control. This whole coronavirus thing is, completely out of, of our control. So what we have to, we have to have these conversations with children, explain them properly with the, with the right words. We, I'm gonna share some links there with recommendations of some sites that give you punctual uh, recommendations on how to go through that conversation about the coronavirus. Uh, it, it, in our med counselor site, we also have some other useful resources how to go through that conversation because this is uh, avoiding that conversation just creates more uncertainty okay we have to address these topics we have to 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 let them know that we don't know and we cannot control it but what we can control is this and this and this and 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 stay there so stay there because Thinking about the many possibilities that we can face in the future is not going to help us to deal with it. It's what we are like the, the uh, right now and right here. El aquí y el ahora. Um, yeah, I was I was also thinking about um, something that I that we've been talking about this week in, with kinder first grade, which is um, gratitude. And it goes with the book of the month, Memoirs of a Hamster. So maybe you can start implementing um, strategies at home to practice gratitude, like uh, having a gratitude journal so that she can focus in the now and here that Ms. Batista just mentioned. What are the things you're, you actually, like, what are the things that you have right now that you're grateful for? And have a time like a family time for sharing these things could be very useful because you will focus on the present moment and not so much on what's going to happen. Even without coronavirus, like we never know what's going to happen. Like anything could happen. So that could be um, another strategy. Mm -hmm. Let's see. There's another one. I once tried to meditate with my daughter and when I opened my eyes, she was no longer there. Definitely, at least in my case, it doesn't it doesn't work doing it at the same time. I think meditation would be more useful for adults, and then with children, practice more like breathing exercises. So you can do both. Adults can do both because the more calm you are, you transfer these feelings to your children, 
And then with them, you can practice like other mindfulness um, strategies like breathing techniques or grounding, which is like, uh, okay, tell me four things that you see right now, three things that you can listen, two things that you can touch, one thing that you can smell so that they focus on their like present moment. Um, and meditation can be practiced by adults. Mm. Okay, what according to you are the priorities in the home family during this period? Okay, I would say the priority would be staying healthy and in every area, like physically, emotionally, and within your family, like the relationships that you use this time to strengthen the relationships with your family members or anyone who lives with you. Um, so I don't know if Miss Batista would like to add anything. Jenny? Okay, she's sharing some um, websites of how can you support your children through coronavirus. Also, we have a website for, um, for counselors and we're posting resources like every week. I don't know, Mr. Ariani, if that answers your, your question. I would say health in every aspect, like physically, staying physically healthy, make sure that you take all the measures to prevent anyone from your family to like get infected by the um, coronavirus. And then trying to stay like uh, mentally healthy and keep the relationships in a positive mood. Of course, we're spending a lot of time with our family members and there will be arguments sometime, but try to make sure that you don't hurt each other's feelings and that at the end you have some time to talk it out and solve the problems. At dinner, we go around the table and all say three things we were grateful for during the day. That's awesome. Yeah, this is a great idea. Or they could, they could also have a journal to write down or draw anything that they are grateful for. Yanni yeah, Sel, could you share the link about mindfulness? I think she left the meeting. Let me check. Once we um, upload the presentation on YouTube, we're gonna add on the comments some websites about activities in mindfulness that you can practice. But here I'm gonna put, write down some apps. The first is Calm. This you can download on your cell phone. And there's also Sadva. Um, these are for adults. So is there any other question? Um, Miss uh, Roxana. This is laptop uh, freezed. Yeah. So she's not in the, yes. I, I would just like to add that this is a very historic time, a time that you're probably your children and all of us will remember forever. Um, so I think that it is very important too to make sure that what they remember is and that what they look back on are pleasant things, the time they spent with you, the time they spent together as a family, that in the future they can tell their grandkids about this, this historic time. Yes, and of course, um, sometimes we might say, oh, it's difficult to look at the positive side of this because, you know, there's so many things going in the world and we are locked down. But usually we are complaining about not having time to spend with our family. And now we have a lot of time to spend with our family. So you can, uh, in your daily routine, as we said before in, in our last um, conversation last week, you can schedule a time to spend together as a family and it could be a dinner or in the afternoon to do an activity together. So yes, as Ms. Manzanares said, it would be 
a really nice opportunity to create these memories with your children and uh, build like more healthy interactions with them. Uh, Ariana said, okay, thank you. We have a gratitude box. Each day we leave a note, something that we're grateful for. After a while, we, off, we open the papers and read them aloud. It's a nice bonding exercise. Oh, I love it. Great idea. And also not only like saying out loud, but also showing gratitude to others. Like what things you can do, what actions you can do to show your family members that you're grateful for them. Like have acts of kindness. Okay, stay, another comment, staying healthy, agree it's an objective, how is important, we say here, eat well, sleep well, exercise, have fun in all we do, but thanks for all today, really appreciate, thank you. Yes, of course, like, as we said before, including our, in your daily routine, um, healthy habits for eating, for sleeping, for exercising, for, you know, mindfulness activities, and, Having fun and keeping your sense of humor is really important too. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Okay, my children are starting to get along much more these days. I suppose it's the silver lining. Yeah, I mean, and and we are not going back to what we knew as a reality. Now we're gonna face a different real reality. None of us know what's gonna happen, but let's try to make it as positive as possible. So Ms. Batista is back. I don't know if she wants to say anything. Thank you for joining us today. We're going to keep this schedule because um, we got feedback from parents saying that in the mornings you have to help your child for e-learning. And so we're going to do every Thursday at 2 p.m. And then we're going to record every conversation so that you can watch it on YouTube later on. Thank you for thank you for coming and joining us. Thank you for joining today. us. And uh, we will be sending a recording uh, to all the parents. Super. Okay, let me see here.